everybody, welcome to Dry Fire Monday, and today we start a new series. We've been talking about defensive carbine just a little bit, had a video on the channel last week of setting up your defensive carbine, talk to you a little bit here about Fragarach, my defensive setup, Lone Star Armory, and today we want to get into how to use it effectively. The new Mantis X10 firearms performance system has all the goodness of the original, plus holster draw analysis and recoil analysis. It's a fantastic upgrade and I recommend it highly. So I want to say again, thank you to Mantis X for sponsoring today's video. This particular video, we're not going to get into how to use the Mantis on your defensive rifle. We're going to get to that in the future, but today I want to set up the basics of how to dry fire with your defensive carbine so that you are competent with it on the day that you need it. So for those who I'm sure are going to ask, there's going to be some people that say, wait a minute, John, I thought you were a pistol instructor. Well, I mean, primarily I have a lot more time on the pistol than I do on the defensive carbine, but I do have about 100 hours of instruction as a student in defensive carbine with some uh, pretty heavy hitters of instructors. So if we talked about just by number of hours who I have trained with, the number one hours that I've trained with in defensive carbine is Steve Fisher of Sentinel Concepts. Uh, number two after that would be Bill Blowers from Taprak Tactical. Uh, next after that, John Chapman and John Spears Doc uh, from Forge Tactical when we were doing some Shoot House Bonanza stuff. Um, then after that, I would say John Farnham is next after that. Then John Lovell after that. Uh, and finally some time with Lee Weems. And so, I, I mean, I've spent some time. Oh, not only that, I forgot Mike Seeklander as well. His firearms instructor development class, we worked on the defensive carbine a good bit as well. So when you add up all those guys and um, the instructor certifications and the time as a student and all that stuff, yeah, I've got some time on the defensive carbine as well. So a couple things, uh, the basic operation of the carbine. So again, you wanna make sure that your carbine is properly set up. That means a, uh, a low power variable optic or red dot. Red dot's totally fine for a, a home defense carbine. That's great. And I had a couple people go, wait a minute, John, why do you wanna have a low power variable optic at rather than a red dot on a home defense gun whole separate question okay we're just going to assume anything that i'm going to show you today using a low power variable optic you can also do with your red dot and that's fine we'll, we'll talk about low power versus red dot another day okay but it has to have a, a some kind of a sighting system on it an optic system on it i really think in the year of our lord 2020 you're running irons on a, a defensive rifle you're way behind so some kind of a sighting system some kind of a white light Brighter is more better, and especially with a, a defensive carbine, I think having it have some serious candela to be able to throw really good, and a sling as well. So, you know how mine's set up. Again, Fragarak here, my Lone Star Armory, fantastic rifle, recommend them highly. So let's talk about the basics of dry fire with our rifle, shall we? First of all, let's talk a little bit about getting into an appropriate ready position. So I'm not dressed today as an operator, right? Uh, we're talking about the Rona and everybody's staying home all the time, and we're talking about using this gun as a home defense tool. So yes, I get it, a bump in the night gun, things go bad, you go grab your gun and you go, what am I gonna have to do here and a bad guy shows up? Well, you might say, but John, you won't be wearing any clothes there. That might be true, but I don't think anybody wants to see me naked on camera. Bad, bad, bad. So, uh, you know, just a, a, a t-shirt and a pair of shorts like you might be in if you're sitting around watching TV or something like that. So we got a couple of ready positions. So if I have the gun slung like this, a slung firearm, is uh, the same as a holstered handgun, right? So of course we have here, our safety is on when we are in a, any kind of a slung position or we are not firing on a defensive carbine. The safety is on. This particular gun, of course, don't have a, a magazine in it right now because we're gonna be doing dry firing. Uh, we can deal with all that stuff and whether you should use snap caps and all that stuff another time. So uh, again, a slung rifle, hands off the rifle. It's like having a uh, holstered handgun. Now, if we're gonna go into a ready position, we have two different ready positions. Our first ready position is what we call a low ready position, right? So in a low ready position, I have the rifle pointed out in front of me, but I do not have it up in my line of sight. This allows for a lot of things. Just like a pistol, we don't bring that pistol up to our eyes and point it at somebody. We keep it down so we can see eyes and we can see hands and we can see waist. Same thing with my rifle here. I drop this rifle into a low ready position and I am ready to bring the rifle up and go to work anytime I need to. 
So what makes for a low ready position? Well, I put the, the butt stock of the gun into the pocket of my shoulder where I'm going to keep it. I actually like mine in a little tighter than most, not out here way out in the pocket, but inside pretty close. And I like mine really high. And the reason I like mine really high is it's a more natural shooting position. When you're shooting something like a 5.56, five, it doesn't have a ton of recoil. So you don't really need to bury it in your shoulder like you would something like a 308 or bigger. So then we keep our muzzle pointed generally towards where we might have a threat but we uh, then keep that muzzle depressed so that we have very good visibility of everything around us. That is a low ready position. Now, when might a low ready position be the best? I think it's actually fast, very fast to get up and get on target. So we wanna use this one and practice it quite a bit because it does a lot of things for us. But it might not be the best situation if, for instance, we have small children who are around us or if we are in a place where we have furniture or we have low walls, I've got a second floor in my house with a, like a low barrister and having the gun in a low ready position, I might go to a place, try to get the gun up and bang it into something. And that's when we might use a high ready position. So to get to a high ready position, really all we got to do is reverse the orientation of the gun. But to do that, we got to swim out of our sling. Even if you're using, whether you're using a traditional sling or a wilderness tactical limited stretch sling like this, you're gonna have a heck of a hard time doing that with your sling slung two points like this. So we swim out of our sling and this is what we do with a high ready position. We get our muzzle up and high right below our visual line. You can see, I can see you right here over the top of my rifle. Now my muzzle is up and the butt of the gun is tucked under my elbow here and tucked into my side. So it's kept nice and close. It is kept close to me. I am in control of this rifle and my muzzle is up. Might be good because again, I might have something I need to get over to go and see what it is that I'm going to do. If I'm going to be shooting into a, a lower position or something like that, or I may have little ones around that I don't want a muzzle that might be oriented towards them. So high ready and low ready are our two positions for that. Now let's talk about our body. I think, you know, there's kind of an old school thing where you see people really blade off and bring the gun in like this and they really blade like old school, almost like somebody shooting an old school Weaver pistol. But really the modern technique of a home defense rifle is that your stance is very similar to <clears throat> what you would do for pistol. It's really not a whole lot different. That the only difference between pistol and rifle is with pistol here, I'm, I am standing in an athletic stance, feet shoulder width apart, strong side foot slightly back, like I'd be ready to fight. And here, when I do this with a pistol, the pistol comes up like this. Instead, with the rifle, I just bring my, my firing hand back and I'm in a spot like that. So again, I'm here, I'm doing that same thing. My shoulders stay square, everything stays square, and I bring the rifle up to me. That's all I have to do and it stays the same. So this is an important thing for us to practice and work on. Now, a couple things. When we're, whether we're working out of a low ready or a high ready position, I want you to think if you're running a, an optic on your gun, if you, whether you are running a, a red dot or a, a low power variable optic, specifically a low power variable optic here, the, the mount height matters, okay? There's a reason that I run a 1.93 mount. I know some people even run in the two inch mounts now, which is okay. And they were made for gas masks because you're hot head stays up higher. But I actually think that it's a lot better for everyone and that's why I run one all the time. And here's the reason for this. I see a lot of people when they go to mount the gun, their head goes sideways like this and then they bring the gun up to their head. But the problem with that when I bring the gun up like this is it takes my eyeballs that are designed to be horizontal like this and it turns them vertical. And of course my eyeballs aren't designed to work like that and so they don't work like that well. And so what I really want to do is I want to keep my head up, my eyeballs horizontal and both eyes open if I can. And the way that I do that here is again from this low ready position I'm ready to go I simply bring the rifle up to me now if I'm running a low power variable optic and a 1.5 inch mount what I might have to do is cant the rifle slightly so that when I bring it up it comes up in line to my eye and I can get the correct eye relief without crank cranking my head over it's one of the reasons I like the 1.93 because now I come up here the rifle comes up and I have proper eye relief and I can see so all I have to do is just bring the rifle up and you can see I keep my head upright and that's that's what I think I want to do. Now, high ready position, same thing. I'm, I'm standing in an athletic stance. I have this rifle cleared. And again, I'm trying to keep this, this uh, uh, elbow in tight. We're trying to keep positive control of my rifle. And, and my support hand here, I don't want this elbow ch 
chicken winging out here because it'll get tired really fast. So I sit in here and keep myself in a nice athletic stance and ready to rock. I can move, I can do whatever I need to do and bring the gun on target quickly from here. Okay, now that we've got you know our, our basics of how to you know use our ready positions, how to hold the gun, those kinds of things kind of down, let's talk about how to mount the gun effectively. Well, maybe before we do, we should talk about our support hand. There's a lot of discussion about support hand here. Old school, if you like, were you know in the army in the 80s or something like that, you're gonna see a lot of guys and they use the front here like this of the magazine well. So they hold the front of the mag well and hold the rifle like that. It's pretty old school. The problem with it is you got all this length out in front of your rifle and when I go to transition targets, it makes it very difficult to do so quickly. So then for a while you saw guys sitting way out here and sticking this arm completely out in front and a lot of times that gets done with this exaggerated C-clamp grip where you're way over the top like that. I don't think that's wrong necessarily, but man, does it get tiring quickly. So what you see me doing here is I have a hand stop about halfway. And what that allows me to do is it allows me a balance there of being able to move the rifle quickly between positions and not get crazy tired. I also have my pressure switch and my clicky switch for my light mounted up top like this. So again, I can get up, get some light on whatever it is I need to get my light on and do all that stuff. And then it's easy to operate. Okay, let's talk about our very first drive dry fire reps. So of course, we always want to make sure that we have a safe direction to aim in. We also want to verify that our rifle is clear. We do that by making sure we do not have any magazine in the gun. We verify that visually as well as with our hand. And then we pull back and we verify our chamber is empty. I like to do that with my finger as well. And then we verify that our bolt is clear. Okay, cool. Now, here's our basics with our rifle. And what I want you to work on this week, I just want you to get your defensive carbine, make sure it's cleared. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a few reps each from high ready and from low ready. The cool part of this is it doesn't cost us a penny in ammo because rifle chow is expensive right now. So here's what we do. We get into our ready position. Our safety is on. This one here, I'm resting my thumb on the manual safety and I always leave it on on a rifle until I'm ready to fire, until I've made the decision that I'm gonna fire this gun. So it's one of the things I've actually seen in several officer involved shootings recently with, the, with patrol carbines, is that they tend to get the safety off on this gun when they haven't made the decision to fire. Not the safest way. I want you to think about that as part of your order of operations when it's time to fire the gun. Gun stays on safe until I've made the decision to fire. Now, here I am from a low ready position. All I'm going to do is I am going to, in one smooth motion, take my safety off, raise the rifle. As soon as I see what I need to see, I press the trigger. Cool, that's it. That's all I had to do. Reset my trigger, put my safety back on, and go back to my ready position. That is, the, by, that, that is fundamentally the simplest thing I do. Now, what kind of a target do I want? Well, you can start with a fairly generous target and then work yourself to a smaller target, and, and you can work that very quickly, or you can work it with a little bit more precision. I'm working on a dot size target out here that would be basically a human silhouette at 50 yards. It's a little target, but it's not little tiny. I mean, it's, it's what you would look at as a human sized target at about 50 yards. So again, I'm sitting here from the low ready position. Oh no, there's whatever it is that the, the thing that says, I gotta shoot that guy. The gun comes up, safety comes off, see the sights, get enough, and press the shot. Now, of course, you have to be honest with yourself. Did I get the hit that I want? If you didn't, well, go back, slow down, myelinate a correct process if you did. Congratulate yourself and move on. Now the high ready position, just a little different in application. Because here's what we want to do with the high ready position. What I have to do here is I have to get the gun out from under my elbow where it's been, get it to a place where it has cleared that, and then bring it back and mount it into my shoulder, see my sights and press my trigger. So I'm just going to kind of show you the mount part of that here again. Muzzle, top of my muzzle is below my eyesight. I say there's what I want to shoot. I drive the gun out to it. I bring it back to my shoulder as I acquire my sights, I take my safety off, I press my shot. Simple as that. Reset my target, Press my tri uh, put my safety back on, come back to my ready position. I'm oriented towards my target, I go there he is, press out while I take my safety off, find my sight picture and press my shot. Simple as that. One more time, get safety on, I want to keep my head up if I can, press out, safety off, see my sights, press my trigger. That's that. That's my basics. Now, of course, once I get done, safety's back on, I return to my ready position. If I'm in the low ready, I'm back here and ready to rock. So I come up, do a rep, got it, yep. Reset, safety on, back to my ready position. Go to ready again. See what we're doing? Now, we're gonna work in the weeks ahead about an awful lot of ways that we can get faster and better and more accurate at speed with that 
just like we do with the pistol. But for now, I want you to just practice that. I would love for you to do every day 10 reps from a low ready and a high ready position, and that will make you more proficient in the basics with your defensive carbine.